This is a recording about having conversations with young people about self-harm. My name is Fiona Skinner and I'm the manager for the mental health support teams in East Sussex. Hello, I'm Amanda Foley and I'm the clinical lead for Early Steps in CAMS. It is helpful to have thought about having conversations and be prepared in your mind about what you might say as all adults working with young people can receive a disclosure at any time and having thought about it beforehand might make you feel a little more prepared. This is a hard subject to talk about, but it is essential that it's not avoided. Talking to children and young people about self-harm is important. If a young person is self-harming, you are not going to cause further harm by acknowledging this as it is already happening. What might happen is the young person could feel acknowledged, respected and cared for by the conversation taking place. School staff have more contact with young people than most other professionals and can be the adult that the young person feels they can talk to. You're not expected to be a mental health professional, but self-harm is everyone's business. It is important for you as a staff member and trusted adult to acknowledge to yourself that this is hard to hear and it can feel very emotional and overwhelming. Staff need support and this should be in place within the school to talk through how you, are, how you feel in supporting a young person who is self-harming. A debrief after a conversation with a young person is a useful way for your own well-being to be looked after. If this becomes part of the practice in your school for staff, this will help to protect against the impact of secondary trauma. Secondary trauma is when you are hearing the first-hand trauma experience of another. Having the conversation with primary aged children or secondary aged children can differ in the language used. If a young person tells you that they are hurting themselves, then firstly acknowledge what a big step they have taken. They have trusted you to share this. At this point, you could say in a calm voice, thank you for telling me what is happening. I'm glad you've been able to share that with me. To thank a young person is validating and acknowledging the brave step that they've taken to tell you what is happening. Imagine how hard that might be for them to tell you. If they've chosen to tell you at this moment, then to continue this conversation would be a priority. You may have other commitments that you have to do, but consider that this is a safeguarding matter and to hear what the young person has to say is crucial. Find somewhere quiet to talk where you will not be overheard. This could be a walk around the school grounds or in a quiet room. Walking alongside each other is a helpful way to talk to a young person as there is not the intensity of looking at one another. This conversation should not be rushed. Go at the pace of the young person. Listen to them in a respectful way. This should be without judgment and with kindness and compassion. Reflect what they say so they know you've heard them and that you understand what they're saying. You can ask them if you can talk to them more about what's happening for them at the moment. Some questions you could ask would be, can you tell me how you've been hurting yourself? When was the last time you hurt yourself? Do you have any injuries that need treatment at the moment? Showing concern for their injuries conveys care. Be careful not to overreact just because they are self-inflicted. See if you can explore their reasons for self-harm. You could say, I wonder what's been happening for you. Tell me a little more if you can. Assessing the level of risk is important. Research shows that to ask a young person about suicide will not make them think about this if they have not already done so. You could ask, have you ever thought about suicide? Have you ever made any plans? On a scale of one to 10, with one being no plan and 10 having a plan to end your life, where would you put yourself? If you notice some marks on them and they've not told you about their self-harm, then this is when you ask them if they've been hurting themselves. This may feel harder to do than to receive a disclosure. If you've caught a glimpse of signs of self-harm by the sleeve of their jumper rising up, this may not be by accident. If you're not the DSL or mental health lead, you may seek advice from them before you ask. Decide who's the best person to speak to the young person about this. You could say, I've noticed some marks on your arm. Have you been hurting yourself? going to move on to what to avoid saying. There's no such thing as a perfect conversation and do not put yourself under pressure to get this completely right. There are things that you can avoid saying 
if you are prepared in advance. What not to say? Don't tell them off and tell them that this is wrong. It will only make them feel worse. Young people do not need to be made to feel shame or guilt by adults around them, as they may already be feeling this. Shame and guilt are often felt by young people who self-harm. Don't avoid talking about it. It will not make it go away. They have shared this with you and they could then feel very alone. Do not ask them to promise not to self-harm. This will not work and it is likely to put a lot of emotional pressure on them and set them up to feel guilty. Do not say this is going to be a habit that will be difficult to stop. This could feel quite frightening to a young person and instilling fear is not going to help. Do not make assumptions about why they are self-harming. Let them tell you why they do it. Try not to panic and overreact. If you stay calm, this will be less frightening for them. Discuss with them what they would like you to do next. Don't say you understand, as none of us can fully understand another's situation. Finally, don't tell them to stop. It really isn't that simple. Now I'm going to think about talking to parents and carers. Once the young person has shared about their self-harm with you and you have had an initial conversation, then talk about how this can be shared with others who should know. How can their parents or carers know about what is happening for them? This conversation may need some time to talk through with the young person. It may be that they want you or another staff member to talk to their parents. They may want you to do this with them. Young people can be worried that their parents will be angry or upset. You could say, I imagine that it feels hard to think about telling your parents, but I am concerned about your safety and this is important. How can we find a way to share this with your parents? Would it help if we did this together? There's a section in the self-harm guidance for parents and carers that you can give to the parent or carer to help them in how they respond. It is distressing for parents to hear this if they were unaware and your support to them can help them in how they respond. The parent or carer may ask you why you knew before them. Often young people can want to protect their parent and telling someone outside of the family can be easier. If the young person does not want their parents to know, the DSL should be consulted and safeguarding processes should be considered. The young person should be informed before any information is shared with others so that they're fully aware of the process. This will help to protect their trust. Finally, we're going to talk about safety plans. Once you've started the conversation with the young person, there are safety plans that you can use with them. There's a primary and secondary post-16 version. The safety plan is, an, is a useful way to continue the conversation. It can help to structure what you ask about. The safety plan is for the young person and is only completed if they want to do this. It can help to think about times of heightened risk, who can support, what are the protective factors, and are there other ways to cope or distract and what to avoid. The safety plan has some self-care tips and contacts in the community. The safety plan should be shared with parents so that they are aware of their role in supporting and understanding about times of risk. The plan is reviewed, so if there are changes in managing this, it can be discussed. We hope that there's been some useful information in this recording for you to use. The Self-Harm Toolkit and Guidance is there to support you to support young people. Thank you for listening.